Do you have any API SDK? If so, let me share something with you. For sure you know all the limitations that you have when you start releasing an API SDK. It will be opinionated, you will impose dependencies, it will be quite strict on the way that it does things, you will need to build one per language, but also when anyone wants to do something with your API, even if they only want a single part, a single function of that API, they need the complete SDK. And since most of us is using already open API specifications, the graph team by Microsoft decided to build a new tool for this job. The tool is Kyoto, and there's some cool things there that I really enjoy. Let me show you. There are multiple ways to use Kyoto, and I will show you two of them. But the first one that I want to show you is using the CLI. So Kyoto is a .NET tool, as many others that for sure you have been using. So you just need to .NET tool install package of Kyoto. And now that I have it, let me jump into my IDE, and I will create a simple API. And I will use the default web API sample that is basically a weather API. If we run this project, we can see that we only have a single endpoint. But the interesting thing here is this Swagger JSON file. This is basically the specification of the thing that we want. And what we typically do is that we want to provide an SDK to our client. And there we have two options. The first one is to go there and implement it by hand. Um, specific implementation for the SDK, extremely opinionated, all of that. And this is one option. The other option is based on that definition that I just showed you, we quickly generate a client. We have a lot of tools for that nowadays. And what does that mean? It means that me, as the provider of the API, I'm building an SDK to offer. But what if, instead of being me, the API provider, generating an SDK for whatever reason, could be me, as the client of the API, generating a new SDK tailored to the specific use case that I want. So let's pretend that we have here a second project that will be one of our clients that wants to consume this weather API. Let's call it weather client. You can see that we don't have anything here, but now what we can do is to use that .NET tool to generate code of that client. Let's do it. So on Kyoto, you will say, okay, please Kyoto generate something with the language C Sharp why? Because Kyoto supports multiple output languages is one of the benefits. So if I want to generate the client for JavaScript or Go, I can do it. Then I will give a name to the client that will be generated, the API client that we'll be using. I can also provide a namespace where I want to hold that client and the folder, the output folder of that client. And then I will provide the definition of that API. Basically that swagger.json that we have seen moments ago. Once we go back into our application, we can see here that now we have the API client folder. If we get into there, we can see there that weather API client that we defined. All the code here has been generated. And to make it compile, just grab the list of packages that is defined on the quick starter of Kyoto and install them. So now your project compile. This means that now our project can use the API client. So how can we use that? So we will define something like var client equals to a new weather API client. And this weather API client will receive a request adapter. It's something that we can mock if we want for testing, for example. So let's create here an adapter, a new HTTP client request adapter. And that request adapter gets receives as well a set of things. For example, you can provide an authentication provider. You can provide something as the HTTP client, for example. You can do a set of things right here. So what we'll use now is something to define that the authentication is anonymous. That is the minimum that we need to define here. And the other thing that I will define is the base URL for the requests. So I will define that, okay, when this weather API needs to perform a request, it needs to go to a specific local of something. Obviously this would come from settings, but now we can use our client that has been generated. So to the client, it knows that you have a resource that is the weather forecast. So you go to the weather forecast and now you can see what options you have there. On this case, the thing that I can do is the get a sync that will get a list of weather forecast. Let's try that and let's iterate through the results to see if there's something there. So now if we run our code, we can see that the API has been invoked and now we are printing all the results. So successfully, we quickly generated an SDK for that API. This is not the cool thing. The cool thing is that in the same way that I generated to C Sharp, 
I could have done that to other languages. And right out of the box, you have things like Python, Go, uh, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp. So it's a an user advantage. You are already building the Open API definition, so why not generating the client? But there's something even cooler than this. Let me show you. Let's go into our weather API and let's bring a second endpoint just for the sake of having two endpoints. Other weather forecast. And this one is get other weather forecast. So they are doing the same, but for the matter of this exercise, it doesn't matter. If we go now into our API definition, you can see that now I have two endpoints. So now let me show you the other feature that I find really cool, but using the extension for VS Code. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to the extensions, search for Kyoto and install it. Next, let's go to the Kyoto Explorer and here let's do something. Let's select the log file. So I'm doing this because I already generated one version of this SDK in the past and there's a file that is the Kyoto log and this one has the complete definition used to generate that client. So it will be useful to regenerate new version. So let's select the log file, pick the one that already have and now you can see here on the left that we have two endpoints the ones that we have in the definition the second one doesn't exist in our code yet okay so i could go here and just decide okay i want everything so let me regenerate the definition i click the play button i could have done this through the cli as well and now when i go into the api client you can see that now i have two folders i have one client generated to access the other weather forecast but also the other one the previous one the weather forecast so the two endpoints but the amazing thing that nowadays at least i'm not aware of other client like this that can do the same let me know in the comments if, if you are aware of one that is you can generate tailored version of the client based on your preferences so imagine that you are building something like an api client for GitHub, and you want to reduce the number of possible calls to a single one like getting the user profile okay it's the only thing that matters to you why having a huge client to do that so you can get here into the api definition and decide for example i don't want this resource or imagine that you have multiple actions inside of the same resource you could pick the ones that you want and if you want to do exactly the same but using the .NET tool, you can use the argument dash dash co to say, please go to a clean output, remove everything before generating. Then I'm saying, please include this part. So I'm saying specifically, I only want endpoints from the weather part. So the other one that was slash other weather forecasts or something like that will not be catched by this pattern. And I can also do the reverse. I can say, please exclude a specific pot. By doing this, I'm generating an optimized client. So let's run this thing. And once we go into our project, you can see that now, once again, I only have the weather forecast. So the other forecast went away. And there's one more thing that I really like in Kyoto. In the past, I have to follow along with decisions by other teams when bringing a new client for their API into my code. Things like the serialization library that they decide to use. Imagine that I'm doing an effort to move everything from Newtonsoft into system.text.json, but now I'm depending on an, a third-party library that doesn't do that. The way that Kyoto was designed, you can plug in your own serializers, for example. If we drill down into the HTTP client request adapter, you can see here that it can accept things like a nice realization writer factory or another one that is extremely interesting, an HTTP client. So I can swap a lot of things from the default implementation of this client. And this is extremely useful. And if you are not aware, GitHub is already moving their old SDK for accessing their API, I think the name was OctoKit, into this approach, something using Kyoto. And what do you say? Will you implement Kyoto? Let me know in the comments, but also before you go, make sure you watch this video right here.